Dr. Faith, Faith B. Israel, Dr. Faith B. Israel, a doctorate in public health. Uh, Dr. Dr. Faith, good morning and welcome to Rise and Shine. Good morning, Joseph. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Right. Um, tell us, um, Dr. Israel, uh, as a public health specialist, uh, what, uh, what, what would you like to see occurring presently in the, in the Tobago space as we seek to treat with this uh, virus or the potential of this virus um, here in Tobago? So I think that the, the thing that is most important for us is to respond on an individual level. We each need to take personal responsibility right now. Um, yes, the health professionals are doing their part. Yes, the other individuals are doing their part. But what we need to do is, as an individual, ensure that we follow the guidelines that are required to to protect ourselves and to protect our families. So what are we talking about? Ensuring that you wash your hands all the time. Your hands should be very dry and should be ch chafed right now. So you need to you wash them dry your hands. Moment. Wash your hands with soap and water and for at least 20 seconds and ensure that you dry your hands with a clean piece of, of tissue that you then throw away or you then use that tissue to open the door to turn off the pipe to leave the space that you are going after you've dried after you've washed your hands because what you don't want to do is wash your hands and then touch the dirty um pipe head or touch the dirty bathroom door that you just um come into so those are the things ensure you dry your hand ensure you wash your hand and dry your hands we have been talking about social distancing, and I made a joke yesterday on Facebook saying, as an introvert, this social distancing thing is really, really giving me life. Because it really means, as Mr. Duke said yesterday on his life, being stush, in other words. It means trying your best to not be in large crowds and try on, particularly if it's not absolutely necessary now if you're in a situation like what happened in chicago and so forth two or three days ago where you came off of a plane and you went into the airport and there were large crowds then of course there's nothing you can do about that but we are in tobago where we can practice social distancing and that is what we need to do right now which means staying at home if you can it means not going out if you don't have to all of the limes that we are used to in tobago you know the harvest and all of those things that we are very used to try our best right now to stay away from those things because we don't want to increase the possibility of anyone getting infected. Dr. Brabna, uh, as a public health uh, professional, are you satisfied with the response that has been coming out of Tobago? Are, are you satisfied with the response of the, uh, the, of the TRHA? Uh, are, are there any recommendations that you may wish to give as we go forward, as we seek to contain the spread of this virus? Well, the reality is we are here now and we are doing what we can and the, the health professionals are doing what they can. The, the, the health system in Tobago is one that is in need of support. We have all been hearing it. We have all experienced it where you go out and you probably don't get service as quickly as you want to and those things. But, and because of that, that is why I have really, really been pushing individuals to take personal responsibility. This is something that you can prevent on your own. This is something that you can protect your family on if you take personal responsibility. So we don't have to rely on the health service. Because remember, the health service only comes in after you've gotten sick or after you think you've been infected. If we do all that we can to prevent ourselves from getting to that point, then we don't need to worry too much about what the health service is doing. Um, how long do you see this 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 virus um, remaining in our space, possibly remaining in Trinidad and Tobago? Um, based on the models that you may have looked at, how long do, um, is it projected to to remain in our space? Well, the reality is COVID-19 is going to be a part of the world, it's going to be a part of Trinidad and Tobago for the foreseeable future. It's like any other virus, it's like any other um, of the infections that we have. We have uh, situations where we have emerging and re-emerging infections continually. For example, we knew about Ebola 
a very long time ago, a couple of years ago, it came up again. It is now going back down. The same thing is going to happen with COVID-19. It's coming up now. It's an emerging uh, uh, infection now. It is something that is very high right now. But after a while, after we've all gotten a grip of it, we, it, we, we would see it going back down a little bit. So the reality is, it's going to be around for a while. How badly it, 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 it affects us and how long it lasts depends on what we as individuals do. So some persons have been arguing, um, Dr. Fate, that um, here in Tobago, we really need to shut our borders. Um, that is the only way that we can prevent the virus from getting here in Tobago, because we have four cases in Trinidad, but no cases in Tobago. I was speaking to um, Dr. Hoyt and Dr. Wheeler this morning, and um, Dr. Hoyt indicated that it's not a matter of when, but it's not a matter of if, sorry, but a matter of when. So uh, is it a, 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 a viable recommendation for us to uh, close our borders at this time? Well, we have to look at the pros and the cons. The reality is Tobago is no longer in a situation where we can cut ourselves off from the rest of the world. We, as, as, as Ms. Haddad said, I, I was listening to the interview before, a lot of the food that we use in Trinidad and Tobago, a lot of the products that we use in Tobago in particular, we have to get from Trinidad. Um, we have a situation where even the, 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 the very simple things, as long as it's imported into Trinidad and Tobago, it has to come through Trinidad because Tobago does not have its own ca uh, cargo port where we are allowed to import things that directly here. So the reality is, it is not practical to think about us cutting Tobago completely off from the rest of the world. But what we can do are implement some of the measures that we've seen in other countries that assist with that. And we've started doing that. We've done it. We, we are kind of slow on the draw but we have started. So for example, we've identified places where we are not allowing um, those citizens to come into our country. What I would like to see us do more though is add to the points of entry, ensure that we have stringent, stringent screening uh, mechanisms to, to ensure that those who are coming in are actually tested and those who, who, who may not be showing any signs and symptoms so that we know exactly where they are, so that we know that they are quarantined, so that we can reduce the spread of it. As you said, the, it's in Trinidad, and it's almost inevitable that it will come to Tobago because we move back and forth all the time. But, but um, Dr. Faith, I, I want to get your feeling on this. Um, based on uh, news reports coming in, uh, the, the, the uh, person zero in Guyana who um, first contracted the COVID-19, indicated that uh, they transited through Trinidad. I'm also hearing that uh, two of the cases, I believe, in Jamaica would have indicated when they had traced their contact that they also um, transited or passed through Trinidad. Um, how do you feel um, knowing that there are three persons um, in, in different countries who would have indicated that one of their point of contact was Trinidad? Um, that is how the disease is spread. That is how uh, uh, it works. The fact that they know that means that they have actually done the work that is necessary to do the contract tracing, as in those countries in Guyana and Jamaica, which is good for them. This is why I, I would actually um, agree with something that has been put out there and it's something that is being talked about in other places. <laughs> to prevent this, what we need to do is basically bunker down bunker down and stay within our small circles. The thing about that is when we are in large, uh, uh, in, in large gatherings, the likelihood of someone who has the disease spreading it is very great. If we are preventing ourselves from being in large gatherings, then we reduce the possibility of coming into contact with somebody who has it. The fact is, it is in Trinidad and Tobago, so we need to really, really start taking stringent measures right now to ensure that we don't spread it within Trinidad and Tobago. What I would recommend, honestly, is for us to bunker down. Only those individuals who provide essential services, and by essential services, I mean those who are in the health sector, those who are police, fire, and those types of services. If you are in a, a, a business place or, or the teacher and you are doing accounts maybe and people need to be paid immediately, those people should be going to work and having uh, uh, using precautionary measures. But everybody else, 
I personally think that everybody else needs to be bunkering down, staying at home, staying away from being out there where other people are. Do Dr. 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 Faith, a short period. Dr. Faith, as a, as a public health professional, um, would you recommend mandatory testing? And at what phase, if not now, at what phase would you recommend mandatory testing? Well, the thing is, testing is um, testing is is expensive. That's a reality. So whether I recommend mandatory testing or not, uh, that's not a that's not a realistic recommendation. The recommendations that they've been using, which is if you have flu-like symptoms, particularly, and this is the critical part, particularly if you have cough, dry cough, and particularly if you have. Um, a uh, 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 shortness of breath because what we've recognized is that the individuals who are critical the individuals who die as a result of, of this disease do so because of respiratory issues those people definitely need to be tested for us to be sure that we are treating with the disease appropriately we may not have the capacity to test every single person who comes in because that is thousands and thousands of people and i really don't know that we have the resources to do that it makes more sense to test those people who we know have been exposed definitely and to test those people who have been who show the signs and symptoms particularly those who are in the the, the high risk group so we're talking about people who are over the age of 60, people who have other comorbidities like diabetes and heart disease and lung disease, and, and, and those are the people who are most at risk. So those are the people we need to focus our testing and focus our treatment on as a result of the results of those tests. And let me also throw in really quickly that when we recommend the social distancing, we are recommending it so that we protect the most vulnerable around us. What we've seen so far is that over 80% of the people who contract this disease are fine. They get better, they go back to life normally for the most part. It is those people who are most at risk that we need to protect. So for example, when we leave our houses, go out and mingle and do something that is not absolutely necessary, contract the disease and come back home, we then put our grandmother or our mother at risk. And that is where we need to be conscious. That is where we need to be to, to, to think of, this is not just about Dr. Fain, I, 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 we are out of time. Thank you for being a part of Rise and Shine this morning. And we look forward to discussing with you again in the future as this situation develops. Thank you so much. Viewers, we shall be right back after this break. Virus to understand how it's going to behave over time. Outbreak. Uh, not quite to the magnitude we're seeing.